I told Nate he's violating the two press conferences within 48 hour rule. So, so uh, you know, this, pr this uh, press conference is done in protest. Um, I'll just put that out there. It is, even Bruce said it's too much. Like, come on, sheesh. Um, all right, guys, let's knock it out. Well, do you put any stock into the, uh, the difficulty of uh, uh, elevation? for uh, playing conditions? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so I have no idea. I mean, I, we were gonna go there. I've played there a bunch of times over the years, and yeah, I mean, guys will tell you they get winded, but usually they battle back, and you know, I mean, no, I, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of theories on it. I don't know. We're gonna go there and, 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 and give it a rip. We're not gonna overthink that stuff. Well, yeah, but, teams being unbeaten at home is much more a testament to the team themselves. And the, I mean, I, I would say so, and maybe there is something to it. I don't know. I mean, I, I, just, I just haven't taken time to research that because it's kind of outside of my mental capabilities. So, um, yeah, we're going to go there, and, and, and we're playing two really good teams on the road, and, you know, you guys are informing me. They haven't been beaten, so obviously it's going to be a great challenge. You know, have you ever gotten to the point where you even think about like tweaking the rotation one? If guys are calling out, or do you have staffers who are after this, any of that? No. Nope. No, we're we'll, just gonna we'll watch it play out in front of us, and you know we'll we'll react accordingly. You know, I mean, and, and hopefully everybody will be healthy, and and we'll have options. You know, but that would be the best case scenario for me. Been one of the teams that's been able to stay healthy. I mean, Colorado's dealt with it. USC's dealt with it. A lot of these teams, you know, Stanford had some guys out and limited. What have you tested? Maybe why you? you I mean, I think the the first thing is you have to give credit to your 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 training staff and your strength coach. I mean, you know, J Rock and Rounds do a great job, and they've been around for a long time. And just you know, our, the, the the medical setup overall is really good at Arizona. You know, that's number one. And, and number two is probably just being a little bit lucky. You know, I mean, you, you get a little bit lucky. I mean, it's a, there's, there's lots of bodies. There's lots of feet on the ground. There's lots of guys in the air. So, you know, sometimes you just have to get, come out on the lucky side of some of those injury types of things. So the combination of those two things usually are it. In press conferences here after both the Colorado Utah games, you said something to the effect of they're going to have something for us when we go up to their place. As you enter the back half of this Pac-12 schedule, a lot of teams are going to kind of want that revenge factor after losing Eric McHale. What does that play into it? Do you see anything? Like I mean, that? I you know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure they they didn't feel too good about how the games went there, and they 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 probably want to, you know a little bit of a revenge factor and that's normal that's human nature and it's it's you know obviously we're, we're aware of that and you know it's a big it's going to be big games for both teams and so hopefully our guys come out and understand how this game could impact our season and we come out and play well i mean that that's all i can hope for just reflecting that i mean whether it's elevation or not i mean i think you've only because of the schedule you've only been to both these two places three times lost twice i mean tough places to play i'd what, say tough places to play ro ro roads hard to play on and you like i said there might be something into it bruce but like you're, you're asking the wrong guy i mean you there's great professors at the university of arizona and i know you have access to the internet you can look them up and you can talk to them about the physiological aspect of playing at elevation they'll know more than i will I have actually, there you go it's it. beautiful it's actually, good uh, when they joined the league, and one of the things they said was that it's not bad the first 24 hours, but it gets worse. And oh, it's just you're great. Yeah, beautiful. Propaganda. I love propaganda. Like, oh. Oh, Saturday games can be Bruce. Can be not only you, you jinxed me on Saturday, and then now you're like throwing bad news at me. Like, I guess I don't like the direction this is going. What, what happens tomorrow? You know. So I don't know. We'll, 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 guys, we're gonna go there and play the game. We're not gonna overthink it. This time last year is when you, you made the decision to move Pella to the bench and have Cedric in the starting lineup just to change things up. Has there been any consideration to changing the lineup no. this year? No need to? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, think, I feel like I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at, and if I'm comfortable where I'm at, that's usually a pretty good thing. Does it help that the, the, the three guys that you've had on the bench have all been providing the, 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 what you're looking for from them? I mean, they're, they're really good players. And, and, and are there instances or circumstances where they're good enough to start? For sure. There's no doubt about that, but you know, sometimes you have to make a decision, and they're not always easy decisions, and and you have to trust that decision, and and I feel good about the decisions we've made. Has KJ been more aggressive these last really three home games where he's scored in double figures? I mean, maybe you know, maybe maybe you know, it's a, it's just a little bit of maturation and experience. You know, he's gathered over the season. I mean, he is a freshman. 
Um, so I'm sure he's getting better and more comfortable. But there's been no no, no different approach in how we've coached him or no conversation telling him he needs to turn it up. I think he's had a great freshman year, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him and his contributions. Tom, you talk about luck playing a role in the health of the team. What role does luck play in just the overall success of a squad? Oh, man. You know, you know Ken Palm has a formula for that. And... Bruce can handle the physiology. You can handle luck with Ken Palm. I mean, I'm, Ken Palm's a great guy. And you can literally, his, his email is right on the website. You know, Ken Pomeroy, he's actually a weatherman. That's how he started in this. He's a meteorologist. And uh, you guys probably know the backstory. Great guy. And he has a luck formula that I would not even be able to begin with where he came up with it or why. So, I mean, listen, there's, 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 there's luck in everything. There's luck in all of our lives every day. I mean, it's part of our, our everyday lives. I mean, walking down the street, driving a car. I mean, luck, it's all around us. And, and so, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to equate it, but I, but I don't want to leave our success up to luck. I want to leave our success up to our preparation and, 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 and you know, our, our cohesion as a team, to me, is, is way more important than worrying about luck. Two sixty one out of three sixty two. Oh, nice! Thank you. There you go. Oh my gosh! Wow! Unlucky. Yeah. Yeah. Probably stop, right? I'm just joking. Bad news today. Well, by the way, how is Keyshawn doing? He's fine to me. I mean, he he was fine. I mean, he. I mean, you know, the injuries weren't the reason we changed the lineup. We just found a lineup that worked and. So he's fine, and I think he's practicing today. So I'm excited. That was one of those things where you know sometimes the next day it swells up. Or yeah, I mean, I have not had any reports on you know that that suggest anything bad. So you know, I think we're business as usual. How has uh, Mo's progression been as the season's gone on? I mean, it's been good. You know, he's good. He's a freshman. You know, he's had some really good games, and he's had some other games. You know, where he, you know he probably could have done one a few things better here and there. But I think all in all, he's trending in the right direction. And you know, I I I still think he's got a lot left in the tank, and I think he's got more to offer this team this year. So so you know, I I would be I would be happy to see him take another step forward for sure. Coaching staff, you guys are approaching every game you know with the same amount of importance, but. Um, we heard from players kind of between that Washington and Oregon State game, that Washington State and Oregon State game, that maybe they didn't approach those games with the same sense of urgency. This week, it, it really feels like there's no option. There's the sense of urgency because of where these teams are and how they play at home. Are you seeing that urgency this week? I mean, listen, um, we played the game Sunday night. I was with you guys. I went home, and I haven't even seen my players. So... I mean, I'll find out in practice this afternoon where we're at with all that stuff. But, you know, I, I, I expect us to have a mature approach. And, you know, hey, you know, we, we lost two games to, to you know, you know a, a very good Washington State team that played good and an Oregon State team that, that played good and made all the timely baskets, you know, they needed to make. And, and that, that happens sometimes. So I'm not overthinking it one way or another. And, and there, there was no come to Jesus meeting or anything like that. And. And and so no, I'm I'm, you know, hey, I just know. Listen, I mean, maybe we go out. Our guys do pay uninspired. I don't know. I wouldn't expect that. But if they do, I guess it happens. But you know, we also could go out and play really inspired and lose because these are these are going to be hard games. So I mean, that's what we're going to prepare for. Totally different circumstance than last year, but at least with the guys you have back, do you think maybe going up there again is you know going to be something they remember the way that game played out last year? I mean, I hope so. But you get again, you're saying it's been so much time between then and now that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think our guys know Utah's a good team. I know our, our players respect Utah. I know our players respect Colorado. Um, so, you know, I, I, know our, I, I know our guys are smart enough to know it's going to be a challenge and that we're going to have to play well to have a chance. What is, that pass that Jaden Bradley made, the bounce pass to Balo, <coughs> cutting down the lane for the dunk, is that, how difficult a pass is that to make in that type of situation? I mean, yeah, I mean, going back, I mean, I th I'm pretty sure I remember the play, uh, you talk about yeah, I mean it's tough. It's tough sometimes making you know, you know passes in the paint, you know, and and you know you 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 prefer people throw the ball up to you know seven footers, but you know sometimes the only window is down low, and and so you know Jaden you know is, is a is a, a good passer in tight spaces and has a knack for making good plays there. So you know I'm I'm glad it worked out, but you know sometimes there's too many bodies and jump stop and kicking it out isn't a bad option either. It's just you just got to read the situation in that moment. What is Mo's next step forward this 
Um, you know, just to, 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 you know, probably finish a little bit better, finish a little bit better around the basket, you know, defensively, you know, understand how his size impacts the, the, the game at all times, you know, and get comfortable, you know, in, in, in help scenarios, you know, that it's a five man, you, you got to solve a lot of problems for a defense, you know, cause usually you're the last line of defense. And, and so, you know, it takes some courage sometimes to understand what's going on on the court. But, you know, maybe your guy's lifting up to set a ball screen, but the action's happening on the left side and you need to not worry about your guy and go protect the rim. I mean, that takes that takes some courage, you know, to, to, to be able to do that and experience. So just, just those types of things, I think, just kind of natural basketball things. What are your protocols with your bigs in those instances about putting the ball on the floor? Sometimes we've seen him put it on the floor and it gets taken away from him. I mean, how are you teaching that aspect of it? I mean, you know, obviously I don't like our guys to dribble and get the ball taken from the floor, but I also know that in basketball you have to dribble or they call traveling if you're moving. So, like, it's just a feel for the game. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. Like, I love it when our guys are able to back down and play one-on-one, but if they draw help, you know, they've got to be able to facilitate and move the ball. We have an advantage somewhere else. So it's stuff we work on all the time, you know. But, you know, I mean, I know Umar had one – last game where he you know, probably over dribbled a little bit and one of their guards was able to come down and take the ball from him and you know he's got to be better than that last question you know, last question okay Go ahead. Oh, well, I was you guys are all gentlemen utah you you know utah now i had a couple of questions on those lines but particularly with carlson you've had trouble with big guys shooting threes uh, Carlson was only one for six here, and he's playing like a four now when they when they go with that other big. And what what was the difference in that game, and what do you expect? Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, he's he's obviously a great three point shooter, and he's capable of making threes, and he's got good size, and they put him in tough to guard situations, you know, and and so you, you know, you gotta. You know, you, you, you got to have a plan, you know, and one of the plans is you have to be great with your big recovering on that, those types of scenarios, which they don't get, a you know, a ton of experience doing. And the other plan is, you know, you got to be willing to maybe switch a few things here and there. I mean, so, you know, we'll, we'll have plans, you know, for that. But, you know, we'd also know he could play the four, but they very well could play him at the five some, you know, trying to kind of trying to invert our defense a little bit. I'm, I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll explore those options. I mean, he's a good coach you know, and he knows how to utilize a good player. So... Um, you know, we're going to have to, you know, be prepared for a real challenge there and guarding him. Carlson's a really good player. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Have a good one.